can remember when we I first started meditating and I, I it was it was a tick of the box okay this time I meditate I'm gonna sit I'm gonna meditate and then I would get up from the meditation and something would trigger me and I'd be like ah meditation mm. didn't work it felt yeah. so good I actually prefer to be sitting in meditation I want to keep meditating I don't want to this life business is really uncomfortable take me back there and you know getting back to the it doesn't matter what you're doing when you're meditating it, it, it is the activity we are human beings we are you know challenges come up and we have you and I and many of us we have children we have work and you know that it, it's it's being realistic and all of it coming down to showing yourself compassion mm. I definitely would not have got to the point of my illness and the vertigo and the many airs and if I gave myself the slightest bit of compassion mm-hmm. I would have at some point going hey sweetie this isn't <laughs> working for you <laughs> come on you know that that kindness is like whoa you're really really beating up on yourself it's, mm-hmm. it's all right it's all right you know those mm-hmm. that compassion was really and I found that compassion with Susie when she was coming over that that sparked a little kind voice in my head that mm-hmm. as you said that when later when I was feeling really nowhere nearly as bad as I was prior but when I started kind of dropping into that space again the awareness of like I, I'm drowning mm-hmm. um then at least there was that kindness to say, come on, we can we can do something. And hey, that that wasn't okay that I just reached out and my husband walked away from me. So I thought there's the compassion that that started to to blossom slowly, slowly. And you know, now that awareness, um, I'm absolutely make a fool of myself constantly. And I make mistakes a lot and I live a life that I still think that some would be like what <laughs> and instead of going oh I should I shouldn't I I, I didn't say the right thing and, and thinking about it it's like just I can let it go mm. I can let it go it's like if I can't be kind to me I know where that takes me and it's not down a very nice road and it's a lot of wasted energy and it feels terrible and I feel the tightness in my body and I don't want to feel like that ever again. And it's just I wouldn't be able to do that without the awareness. If I didn't, if I don't have the awareness of how I'm speaking to myself, then how am I going to change it? How am I going to choose again? And it's a practice and it's a practice again and again. It's like, oh, there's that old voice, you know, and we've heard that again and it sounds very cliche, but it's this like, yeah, you know it when you're in it and you feel the tightness and the contraction and you notice what you've been saying to yourself. I notice what I've been saying to myself. Mm. Uh, I think it's a really great point to talk about is so because a lot of people are not in their bodies because obviously when we're living out here we're not inside of ourselves so that is that is a practice that occurs when you choose to get to choose to be inside of you when you choose to sit down and be with yourself so that that is the first point isn't it so only then when you continue to practice that are you more present in your body so you notice the, the things, you notice the contraction, you notice when you feel expanded. And so that's one of the most extraordinary things is when you're there, you're not up here. When you're mm. in your body, you're not in your thoughts and in your, 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 your past conditioning. But that's one of the gifts that comes about through meditation is that cultivation of being present with ourselves here as opposed to here, here. Mm. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that for anyone that's sort of like, okay, so I don't know if I feel, I, I don't feel contracted. That's yes. one of the gifts that comes from meditation. Yes, absolutely. I absolutely was a head floating around in the world for a very long time. I did not even, other than it was this 
vehicle to get my head around. I, it, mm. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't telling me anything other than it was quite uncomfortable a lot of the time. Mm. Um, until I, I remember it really, really hit home for me when I was uh, walking down a garden path and I, I literally jumped out of the way before I even knew that there was a snake ahead. And I was like, wow, all this talk about our body knowing mm. before our mind, it was like that was proof to me. I My body knew that. My body was, and time and time again, you know, you just start to notice how important obviously our body is, but what an important messenger it is as well. And when you're so caught up in your thoughts and you think your thoughts, all of your thoughts are real and you don't have the space and the awareness, it's just this muddled mm. concentrate of yeah, stuff and stories.